Good afternoon, everybody. Phil Brown here with NextGen Cam. Today, I'm going to go over how to utilize Fusion 360's probing, probe geometry cycle, so that we can actually measure our part on the fly and make adjustments to cut our comp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and jump straight into our manufacturer workspace. And I'm going to create our setup. In this case, we go ahead and we have our setup, our X, Y, Z. We're not going to spend a ton of time on that. The key element is, is we have a couple of different features, and based on these features, we're going to set up a couple of scenarios. So scenario number one, let's say we're trying to do a bore, and this is a very precise bore. Let's say it's plus or minus one thou to start with. So what we're going to do is we're normally going to rough out our part, do a lot of different things, and we could actually use a boring cycle on that feature. So I'm going to go ahead and select a tool. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and grab my half inch flat end mill. And with that being said, we're going to go in and our geometry is going to be that face. And then what we're going to want to do is we're actually going to want to utilize wear on this as well as stock to leave. So let's go ahead and leave 50 thou on the walls. So what's happening here is we're going in and we're basically pre-boring out this hole. So I'm actually going to call this our pre-bore. So now that we've gone in and we've bored out that hole, we've left 50 or 100 on the diameter, depending on how you do your math, um, we're going to go ahead and start our actual probing cycle. So if we go in, we could say inspect probe geometry. And what's going to happen here is we need to select our probe. And we're going to go through the process of actually using our probe to probe the inside of that bore. So we're coming down and we're measuring that. One neat thing is, is we could actually set our plus or minus on our size. Let's go ahead and say our size is plus or minus one. I could also actually lower this a little bit if need be, because we might be dealing with a little taper in our end mill. Good news is, is with boring, we shouldn't get a ton of taper. But we're trying to find exactly where we want to bore in that heights menu. The last thing I'm going to do where I see a lot of people get confused is when we're trying to tell the software we need to update our toolware. Well, normally you would update toolware to your next tool, but we're pre-cutting this hole. So with pre-cutting that hole, we actually want to account for in Fusion the wear of that toolpath prior. So we're actually going to use tool 15 here for both the pre and the post cutting and we can actually set a minimum threshold. So I know a lot of people always are curious about this and how this works is, well, we don't want the machine making an adjustment every time it goes in and probes that hole, right? So we can give it a minimum, let's say five tenths. So every time it starts to walk outside of five tenths, we're still in our one thou tolerance, it'll actually go ahead and make that correction. Another common thing that I see is some people like to use maybe only 80% correction versus 100 so that we don't go sh overshooting back the opposite direction. Last thing that I always love to turn on is I always like the ability to turn on wrong size. Let's say we go in, we break an end mill. We're actually going to pick up on that end mill being broken because there's going to be too much material left. Again, we left 50. Now we probe it. It sees more than one. Let's just go ahead and shut down that machine and notify somebody something's wrong. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. And then a very quick little tip here is if I highlight this toolpath and push Control D, I can actually duplicate it and drag it after the fact. We're going to go ahead and drag that down. Oh, in this case, we went a little too far. So let's go ahead and split these up. And let's go and extend our menu out. So again, this is our finish bore. And just like that, we went in, we did our pre-bore. We did our probe geometry. I'm going to go ahead and push Control G to regenerate that so we get rid of that error message. And then lastly, what we're doing is we're coming back and we're actually doing our finish bore. So we can go ahead and verify that one more time. Make sure I didn't drag the wrong one down, which I didn't. And we still have that 50,000 set. So again, this is the idea that we're really trying to hold a tight tolerance across several parts. It could be two, it could be three, it could be two. 100, 300, it doesn't really matter. So again, is the idea is, is we're going to pre-cut, we're going to probe that hole, and we're actually going to adjust the wear to that tool 15 from that probing cycle. And then we're going to come back a second time, and we're going to go in, and we're going to bore that back out and adjust our cutter comp accordingly. So again, this, in theory, will give you more of a perfect hole every time. It'll keep us within our very tight tolerances, especially if you have a machine that throughout the day heats up and cools down. It'll constantly maintain what we're trying to do and make you as a programmer or an operator a much easier life not having to check every single part. 
So the next scenario we're going to talk about is we're going to actually do this with a little looser tolerance. Let's say, for example, we're working with like a three to five thou tolerance on this actual C notch feature. So again, I'm not going to create a brand new setup for that. We're just going to go ahead and start our process. So the idea is, is we roughed this part out and everything. I can now come in and do my finishing pass. So we're just going to do a 2D contour. And I'm going to hold the Alt key if you guys haven't known this. If you hold the Alt key, you can pick one chain and then add in your additional chain features to get that set. We're still going to use that half inch end mill the same. And once again, we're going to go ahead and throw on wear. So this time you're going to notice I'm not using any stock to leave because, well, I don't need to leave stock, right? I'm going to cut this perfect. And then we're going to come in and you're going to see me do this here is we're going to probe it after we've already cut it, right? So again, I'm going to pick these two sides. I may not do this with an island, just wasting a little cycle time. I can actually move those points to wherever I want. And again, you can drop the heights down to get it a little further into that pocket so that we're making contact, you know, roughly average where that end mill's hitting. So again, the idea here is, is just like we did before, we're going to update tool wear, but this time we're going to update that tool path. So again, we're cutting, probing, and then moving on. And in this case, let's say we're going to give ourselves one and a half in our minimum update because our hole is plus or minus three thou. So again, all that's going to happen in the difference between these two cycles is let's just go ahead and folder these real quick. So we have our folder, and this is a precise hole. If you notice, I have terrible spelling skills. Now you can tell that I'm a machinist at the end of the day. And we're going to take all of those, and we're going to place that in the first folder. The second folder we're going to create, let's go ahead and do our new folder. This one is going to be maybe a um, spot check, right? So we don't need to be too wild about what we're doing, but we do have that ability to do either one as we're working on our parts. So again, this one here being plus or minus one or less, I would do a pre and a post cut with a probing cycle in the middle. Now, if I just needed to make sure that I didn't want to caliper every one that comes off the machine, I would just throw in an additional probing cycle and just probe this part, knowing the correction is coming out on my next part. So now we could do the same thing here, even on something like this island feature is, again, let's kind of treat this once again, is this island feature is going to be a spot check, right? So we're going to go in and we're going to do our milling, again, a 2D contour, pick that profile around the outside of our part. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my wear and hit OK. So we're just right around the outside. And even though we have fillets and we're changing directions and everything, that end mill is making contact on all those faces. So once again, we go back, we do our probing cycle. I could probe from this face to this face if I wanted. I could also sit down and I could actually say, you know, maybe one of these little shorter areas. Based on your machine, you may have a little bit of a movement in X and Y, um, especially you guys with those older Fidal machines. I have that ability to go ahead and measure in the X, in the Y, and pick up my points to set that so that I'm not utilizing any real issues and I'm really making this as simple as possible. So again, let's just go with that number of three. I really like plus or minus three, even if my drawing was plus or minus five, and we could wrong size it, update tool wear, and then with that being said, one and a half and 80%. This time round though, I may wanna print my results so one nice thing with printing your results, if you're on like a Haas or a Fanic, you have that ability to deprint your results into another file and retain that file. So if your post doesn't support that, don't forget that us at NextGen, we have that ability to modify your post processor so that we are printing out those results and getting everything set up and implemented. That's basically it for the probing cycles. If you guys want to learn more, you can go ahead and click the link down below. We currently do have a Fusion sale right now. Fusion 360 is 30% off, as well as the services that we offer from NextGen Cam, we're offering 30% off on top of that. And then lastly, we are actually going to have a drawing based on a 3D connection space mouse and a CAD mouse. So go ahead and also sign up with that using the link below. Thank you.